showing you how to play Star Wars Rebellion from Fantasy Flight Games. It's a two to four player game of epic galactic conquest between the evil Empire and the heroic Rebel Alliance. So let's go and learn how to play Star Wars Rebellion. So set up of Star Wars Rebellion. Place the board in the middle of the table. It's a very big board. It's got actually two boards that join together in the middle. Each player then gathers all his components for their faction. Starting leaders, action cards, your mission deck, loyalty and subjugation tokens for the Empire, rings which you attach to your leaders, The Empire gets these, which um, you use when the Death Star destroys the planet. You put these over the planet, it's just destroyed. The rest of your leaders that you can recruit during the game. Similarly, the Rebels gather their player mat, action cards, mission deck. Your mission deck for the Rebels. Loyalty markers, various rings you can attach to the leaders. The rebels will have these sabotage markers and also all the rest of your leaders that you can recruit uh, during the uh, game. Then each faction will take their starting leaders and place them in their leader pool. For the rebels, these are your four starting leaders. So Jan, Dodana, Princess Leia, Mon Mothma, and General Riken. And your starting leaders are the same in every game. And how you differentiate them from the other leaders is they do not have this recruit icon. So the starting leaders do not have the recruit icon. The Imperial starting leaders are Darth Vader, Emperor Palpatine, Grand Moff Tarkin, and General Taj. Once again, your starting leaders will not have the recruit icon. To set up the time track, you put the turn tracker on uh, turn 1 and the Rebel Reputation marker on turn 14. To set up the objective deck, you separate the, the objective cards into three different piles, level 3, level 2, and level 1. You shuffle each pile, starting with level 3. Place the level 3 cards on the bottom of the objective deck. Shuffle the level 2 cards, which I've already done. Place them on top of the level 3, and the same with level 1. They get shuffled and go on top, and then... The rebel player will select a objective card. Next thing we do is we set up the action decks and uh, the action deck which has the recruit icon this is going to be the deck you will use to recruit new leaders into your leader pool during the game so shuffle this and uh, put that on the action deck space of your player board then you have the starting action cards which you will uh, shuffle and deal to at the start of the game for your first game, it's not recommended to use these, but I would use them. They just give you extra abilities during the game. So, for example, um, so you have a Brilliant Administrator, more dangerous than you realise. So this card says Assignment, so this can be used uh, as a mission, and you, but you will have to use 
Grand Moff Tarkin uh, to do this mission. It's an assignment. And also then, if this leader is in a combat, you can you can then play this card and it, it allows you to uh, draw extra space tactics cards. So these cards, you would obviously keep them face down and they can be used uh, during the game. Exact same for the Rebels. They have their action deck with they'll use to recruit leaders and their starting action cards, which they will deal two from. That's an expansion card, apologies. So there you go. Same thing, so these are two assignments, so them leaders can uh, play them as missions later in the game. Similarly, keep them face down and use them at the appropriate time in the game. Then we will assemble the rest of the components. So you have your space tactics cards, your ground tactics cards, your damage tokens. And then I have all my miniatures and dice just in a handy little uh, container. The green dice are for the expansion, so we won't be using them. Um, but yeah, so gather all the rest of the components. Next is gather your starting mission cards. So there's four starting mission cards for each player. That's your mission deck. And these cards have this little uh, arrow at the bottom. And these cards will remain in your hand for the entire game. So even if you use them at the, in, at the end of the refresh phase, you will return these cards to your hand. Um, so there are your four starting mission cards. You will then shuffle, shuffle the rest of your mission deck. And place them like so on your little mission deck space. Like so. And these are the Emperor's four starting mission cards. As you can see, they've got the same arrow. So they will always be in your hand for every turn. As, as I said, even if you use them, um, they will return to your hand. And there's the Emperor's mission cards. Now the uh, Emperor also has a type of mission card called Projects. So here, these are the Projects. They've got the same, um, same back, but they are uh, slightly different in that they have this, what differentiates them is this little symbol down here. And... Um, you can collect projects during the game and they will um you will take them into your hand of mission cards and you will play them the same as uh same as normal missions so they're the projects and they have their own space over here on the on the board that's the projects deck so to set up uh, your starting planets and loyalty and where you put your starting units You'll take the probe deck, and this is the advanced setup too. There is a um, recommended setup in the Learn to Play book, but as with the action cards, I would just go straight to the advanced setup. And the advanced setup is you literally deal cards from the probe deck until you have dealt five imperial cards cards that have the imperial icon on them so the first five of these you deal and the first three rebels cards with rebel icons the first two imperial ones will be will start subjugated and the other three will be loyal and these three will be loyal to the rebellion so we'll be putting a subjugated token on Sullust and Rodia and loyalty uh, on Corellia, Mustafar and Megiddo for the Empire. So there you have it. So Sullust, Rodia were the first two uh, cards with Empire icons we pulled from the deck. So they both start subjugated. Then you have Mustafar, Corellia, 
and Maigito that start loyal. And similarly, the rebel pull Kashyyyk, Naboo and Ryloth. So Kashyyyk, Naboo and Ryloth all have rebel loyalty to start the game with. So the Imperial player starts with quite a few units compared to the Rebels. So you have three Star Destroyers, three Assault Carriers, 12 TIE Fighters, 12 Stormtroopers, five ATSTs, an ATAT, and a Dead Star. So now I think it's a good time to actually talk about the units. So on your player, uh, board it has all the different units that you will be using in the game so the icons to the left are the resource icons so you will see these icons on the planets and these uh, will tell you what um, units that that planet can build so for example if you look at Corellia so Corellia has the blue triangle and a blue square so that means that when in the build phase, if the if the Imperial player or the Rebel player um, has loyalty in Corellia, that they can build so as a triangle, so they can build a TIE Fighter and they can build a Star Destroyer in the build phase once they um, have loyalty in uh, Corellia. Now, so what does everything else mean? So that's so so similarly on the ground troops, the, the orange resource icons. So when you see these icons uh, in a planet, that will tell you that uh, that planet will produce uh, these units. So all the different values and icons. So in combat. This means that TIE Fighters each get one black dice and they can take one damage. Assault Carriers get one black dice, one red dice can take two damage. Star Destroyer, one black dice, two di two red dice, four damage. Um, an important thing to mention about the Super Star Destroyer, the Dead Star and the Dead Star under construction. This, mean this icon means that they can only be built using project cards. So your project mission cards, so that means that these these units can be built um, in the build phase using the icons on the board, but they will, as I said, be built using various different project cards. They're very powerful, as you can see. Superstar Destroyer, two black dice, three red dice, take six damage. And the Death Star always gets four red dice. And the Death Star can only be destroyed by an objective card, a red, one of the Rebels' objective cards. The Death Star under construction, however. So when you start building a Death Star, it will go. Um, the Death Star will go on the build queue, and the Death Star under construction, which will be this one. So you will put that on the board. And that can be destroyed, so it has four black damage. So the ground for the ground units, stormtroopers have one black dice, one black damage. Uh, ATSTs have one black dice, one red dice, two red damage. ATAT one black, two red dice, three damage. Now another thing to mention with these units is that. Anything that has this little uh, TIE Fighter icon means that it cannot travel by itself in space. So if you are moving units from one system to another, these units will always have to be carried by one of the bigger units. And so you can see these values here are the number of units that a ship can carry. So the Sol Carry can carry up to four units. Star Destroyer 6, Super Star Destroyer 8, and the Dead Star can carry 8 units. As you can see, the Rebel player starts with quite a lot less uh, starting units. 
and and this is the, the theme of the game. It's to, it's to give you the feeling that as a rebel player, you are really up against the odds. So the rebel player starts with one Carillion Corvette, one rebel transport, six um, rebel troopers, two air speeders, two X wings, and two Y wings. Now. Placing these units uh, for the Rebels is a lot different to the Empire and that the Rebels can only place them on the Rebel base space which is the space where your hidden base is going to be or and sorry and one other uh, system which is loyal to the Rebels or it can be a neutral system. So over here we have this is the rebel base space. So you can place uh, the units in this space and one other. So it can be either Kashyyyk, Naboo, Ryloth, or as I said, it can be a neutral system. So this is just to give you an idea of how the rebels would have, or sorry, how the Empire would have placed their starting units and just uh, another thing that I didn't mention is that Coruscant is always it starts off uh, loyal to the Empire and it will always be loyal to the Empire so as well as the five starting planets which I, I'm showing you there the starting planets we pulled from the probe deck Coruscant is also loyal to the Empire so you can place, so there's six different planets that the Empire can place his starting units on. And as I see, we've placed them, spread them out. There, I haven't put any thought into this. I've just literally just put them on each of the different planets just to give you an example of how you would place your starting units as the Empire. So the Rebel player has placed his starting units. So as I said, I haven't placed them in a rebel loyal area because you can place them in a neutral planet. The reason I have done this is a bit tactical because um, this Mon Calamari produces the Mon Calamari cruisers. So if the rebels so the rebels will be aiming to get loyalty in Mon Calamari pretty quick so that in the build phase they can build the Mon Calamari cruiser. And I've placed just a few units on the rebel base so yeah, so as I said, the Rebels place theirs on the Rebel base space and one other loyal or neutral planet. So the most important part of setup for the Rebel player is choosing where your hidden base is. So you use the probe deck for this. Will you take out the five cards that were uh, dealt as the starting Imperial? Uh, loyal planets and where you put the imperial um starting units so these planets will go back in the box because the rebels obviously cannot pick a, an imperial planet to have their hidden base the three planets that were picked for the rebels they'll go back into the deck and then the rebel player will take the probe deck and carefully pick a planet to be it's secret base. And so secretly we're going to double down on Mon Calamari. So the Empire not be, might not be expecting the Rebels to pick Mon Calamari as its starting, um, as its hidden base, sorry. So we'll pick Mon Calamari. And I'll just give you a couple of tactical tips on why we've picked Mon Calamari. If you see, most of, the, most of the Imperial units are starting on the other side of the board. The closest planet to Mon Calamari that has Imperial units is Megito. And it is one, two, three, so more or less four. So at least three moves away. And plus we've already got quite a big build up of units there. I'm not saying always pick somewhere like this to be your hidden base but 
because it's quite a distance away, we have a chance to build it up and then we can always move the hidden base later in the game. So we've picked this secretly. So then Mon Calamari, so then that goes under there. So now we have, um, the rebels have picked their hidden base. Last thing in setup is we have our four starting missions, but so we will deal two more mission cards to add to our hand of mission cards. Same thing for the rebels. You've got your four mission starting mission cards, and then you will add. So then you will draw two from the top of the mission deck. That is your starting mission hand for the rebels. Star Wars Rebellion is played over three phases: the assignment phase. The command phase and the refresh phase. So the assignment phase is where you will assign leaders from your leader pool. So leaders from your leader pool to various different uh, missions from your hand of mission cards. So before I explain about assigning missions, I think this is a good time to talk about skills and skill requirements. So you see every um, mission card has a skill requirement in the top left hand corner. So you've got four different types of skills. So you have yellow, which is diplomacy. You've got blue. It's a little like a little eye which is intel the red fist is spec ops and this little brown data chip type uh, with the arrow is logistics so any leader you will assign to any of these missions has to meet the skill requirement so for example each leader as you can see has skills so Mon Mothma has one logistics and three uh, diplomacy. Princess Leia has two intel, two diplomacy, and one spec ops. Jan Dodana has two intel, one diplomacy, and General Riken has one logistics, one di diplomacy, and one spec ops. So, so for this mission, if we wanted to play this mission, we would require three diplomacy. So, Mon Mothma can attempt this mission because she meets the skill requirement. She has three diplomacy. Now, also, thing to mention is that if any of the mission cards have uh, a picture of the of one of the leaders and this little uh, dual lightsaber a symbol here, that means that if you assign the specific leader to that mission, so we will assign Mon Mothma to that mission, she will get two automatic successes if the Empire decides to try and oppose that mission. I will explain about opposing missions in a little bit later. But just to recap, if you assign the leader that has their picture on the mission and it has the little symbol there, that means two automatic successes and you add them to whatever uh, dice rolls you get if the Empire opposes this mission. Now, you can, when you're assigning leaders to missions, you can assign up to two leaders to a mission. Now, the reason you would need to assign um, more than one leader to a mission, so if you look at our leaders, so if we wanted to do mi this mission, none of our starting leaders have the skill requirement for this mission. General Riken has one, Spec Ops. Princess Leia has one Spec Ops. 
neither of the other two leaders have any spec ops. So uh, none of our individual leaders made it. But what we can do is we can play up to two leaders, uh, assign two leaders to a mission. And as you can see, so Princess Leia has one spec ops, General Riken has one spec ops. That's two, so they now meet. Both of those leaders now meet the skill requirement for this mission. So both of them can attempt this mission. So just going back to the start of the assignment phase, so now that I've explained skills, so to assign a leader to a mission, you will play a mission from your hand of mission cards, ensuring that the leader you assign to the mission meets the skill requirement, and you simply place the card face down and place up to two leaders on the mission. So similarly for the Imperial player, you select the card from your hand of mission cards, assign a leader to it uh, to attempt the mission. The Imperial player has uh, a separate deck called Project Cards, which there's a space for them on the board and they're differentiated by this little symbol down in the corner. And so the Imperial player has missions which will allow them to pick up some of these project cards and they will go into your hand of mission cards. Project cards all require the logistics skill in the corner. So you need to have um, leaders that have uh, the logistics skill to do these missions. And all of them, uh, the, all of the abilities on these cards are resolve, which means that uh, the rebel player cannot oppose them. And as I said, when you assign a leader to them, you simply resolve it. Now, these are the cards that you will use to construct dead stars. There's the Imperial player can have up to two dead stars. You can... Uh, Build super star destroyers, um, and also you can. It's the card you would use. One of the cards you would use to use the Death Star to destroy a planet, as you can see. So yeah, just wanted to quickly explain about project cards. So they're a little bit different to normal missions. They all have the logistics icon. They all will resolve and cannot be opposed, and you will, as I said. You will pick them up as the Imperial player as the game goes on. And they have their own little space over here on the board. The projects. Just there. And the Rebel player also has uh, missions that will require the logistics skill. And similarly to the Empire, all the Rebel cards that have the, have the logistics skill are also resolve missions. So they cannot be opposed. So the next phase is the command phase. And in the command phase, players will take turns doing one of two things. Revealing missions and attempting them. Or activating systems and moving your units around the board. We'll go through revealing missions and attempting them first. And as in the assignment phase, the rebel player will always go first in the command phase. So the rebels are going to attempt this mission, which is Build Alliance. They're going to attempt to get some loyalty in one of the systems on the board. And it is a diplomacy mission, it requires one diplomacy. One Mothma has been assigned to it. She has three diplomacy, so she's going to do this mission. So we're going to send Mon Mothma to Mon Calamari. The rebels want to get loyalty in Mon Calamari, which will give them access to the resources uh, the, so they can build um, important units. So now the Rebel player, if sorry, if the Imperial player has any leaders left in his leader pool, and as you can see over there, Darth Vader is still in the Re uh, Imperial leader pool. So the Imperial player can now decide whether he wants to oppose this mission or not. If he doesn't oppose the mission, 
then the mission will be completed successfully and the rebels will gain one loyalty in Mon Calamari. But in this instance, the Imperial player says, no, I don't want, I don't want the rebels getting loyalty in Mon Calamari, so he's gonna send Darth Vader, who has two, Darth Vader has two diplomacy skills, which means he is meets the skill requirement for this mission, so he can oppose it. So you will put Darth Vader in Mon Calamari. Then you will count up the icons for the required mission. So it's a diplomacy mission. So Mon Mothma has three, Darth Vader has two. So normally, Mon Mothma would roll three dice. Darth Vader would roll two dice. But this card says that if there are rebel units in this system, then Mon Mothma gets to roll two additional dice. So she gets five dice against three. So let's roll these dice. Wow, that is unbeatable. Roll there. So, I'll take it through what the dice do. So, this means one hit each. And the dual lightsabers count as two hits. So you can see here that the rebel player has scored one, two, three, four, five, six against two. So overwhelmingly, the rebels have completed this mission. The Imperial attempt to oppose it has failed. So the Imper the rebel player will gain loyalty in Mon Calamari. And now both leaders are in this system for the rest of the round. A very important thing to remember about leaders and systems is that whether you're activating a system, which I'll go into in a minute, or attempting missions in a system, leaders in a system lock the units that are in there. So now we could not attempt to move, the rebel player could not move these units because Mon Mothma has attempted a mission in there, so now she's locked all them units in that system. So the rebel player has just completed a mission which has given him loyalty in Mon Calamari. So let's talk about loyalty. Loyalty. Loyalty is very important in this game mainly because it gives you access to build the various units that each planet will produce, which is these icons here will tell you which units a planet produces. So if you have loyalty in the build phase, you can build these units. The main way to get loyalty is by using mission cards, which you've just seen. The Rebel player used Build Alliance mission to gain loyalty in Mon Calamari. The Imperial player has a starting mission also called Rule by Fear. But it's a little bit different in that there has to be an Imperial unit in this system before the Imperial player can attempt to gain loyalty there. But that's a starting mission uh, similarly to build alliance so it will come back into your hand at the end of the round so it's a mission you can attempt every round okay so let's talk about gaining and removing loyalty because it can be a little bit complicated in this game so kashik has rebel loyalty so the Empire decides that it's going to play a mission to try and gain loyalty in Kashyyyk. So the Empire will play Rule by Fear again. Mon Mothma, sorry, Grand Moff Tarkin is going to attempt this in Kashyyyk. Unfortunately, the Rebel players do not have any leaders to oppose this mission so the mission is going to succeed and the empire is going to gain one loyalty in this system now as the rebels have loyalty in this system then what that means is that simply the rebel token is removed and the planet becomes neutral so anytime you gain loyalty 
where there is already an opposing loyalty in there you will simply remove that loyalty and the, the system will now become neutral so if the empire now wanted to gain loyalty again in this system then they would have to play another mission either in the next turn when they get ruled by fear back into their hand or there is other cards in in the mission deck that you can use to gain loyalty so another example i want to show you is if a planet was subjugated so a planet can be subjugated and still have rebel loyalty so for example if the rebel player had moved in it's sorry if the imperial player moves in here lands units on the ground then that planet becomes subjugated now same thing if the imperial player then attempted to gain loyalty in this system using rule by fear they wouldn't simply just flip this to loyal because there is an a rebel loyal marker there already you would simply remove it and same thing it remains subjugated and similarly to the last um, example you would have to then play another mission to gain loyalty to flip that to loyal if the uh, planet is subjugated and uh, for example if the rebel players play build the build alliance mission then and it was successful then they would simply uh, and this is in a subjugated system then they would simply put the loyalty marker underneath the subjugated token yeah so let's explain subjugation so subjugation so as I said, when Imperial units move into a planet and land ground units on a planet that either has rebel control or is neutral, so neutral or sorry, loyal to rebels, then that planet will become subjugated. And the main effect subjugation has on the game is that, so the planet is still loyal to the rebels but obviously the Imperial units are on board on the planet, so it's subjugated. So the main effect it has is that when the Empire is building, so on this planet, it does not have access to all the units that this planet can build, because the local workforce aren't happy that they're being subjugated by the Emperor, so they're not putting 100% into producing the units. So they always get the leftmost unit, If it's a planet like Sulakami, Salakami, sorry, or Felucia, which only has one, produces one unit. So if that, if that system is subjugated, then you would still produce this unit. Also, it's worth mentioning that, so there's a lot of objectives that give you reputation for having so rebel loyalty in uh, different regions and in different planets and different systems so any system that is subjugated, subjugated but has a rebel loyalty marker under it for the objectives it is regarded as loyal to the rebels so if you have an objective that says have three systems in a region that are loyal to the rebels, then this counts as being loyal to the rebels. And then, just finally, while I'm on, so a region. So these are systems, and this bold red line is a region. So you've got in this on this board, there's usually four systems in every region. These planets that do not have a resource icon or somewhere where you can put a loyalty marker, these are remote and these are popular systems. So 
you have quite a few remote systems on the planet but yeah I can never gain loyalty in any of these systems and yeah that's that's covered subjugation and loyalty so the next thing we're going to talk about is activating system which is the other thing you can do in the command phase and so this is when you can Take leaders that are still in your leader pool, so ones that you didn't assign to missions in the assignment phase. And then you can use these leaders to activate your uh, systems and move your units. So for example, Darth Vader is still in the leader pool, the Imperial leader pool. So the Imperial player has decided he needs to start spreading out to try and find his hidden base. So he is going to activate Dagobah. So when you activate a system, it means you can move any units from adjacent systems into this system. So as you can see, the Imperial player has units in two different systems that are adjacent to Dagobah. So technically he could move units from this system in here and this system into Dagobah. The problem with that is, is that, as I said earlier, if he was to move all these units in here, they would then be locked for the rest of the round. So if he had more leaders in his leader pool and he wanted to do uh, more activating systems later in the round to move more units around, then if you move these units in here and these units in here, that means you can't move them again for the rest of the round. So... What the Imperial player here is going to do, he's going to move units from Sullust. So he's only got an assault carrier in Sullust. So the assault carrier can carry up to four units. So he's going to carry uh, two TIE Fighters and he's going to leave one dude in Sullust. So Sullust will remain subjugated. And he's going to move these in here, like so. And any time the Imperial player lands on a planet, even if there's rebel units in there, the rebel player has to uh, reveal whether the hidden base is there or not. So in this case, it's the rebel base isn't there, so the rebel player would say, no, nope, sorry, it's not there. And that's it, so he's going to leave these units here because there's some systems down this side of the board that he's got He's got one more leader left in his leader pool. So later on in the round, he's going to use that leader to activate one of these systems so he can start spreading down this side of the board and uh, not getting all of his units clogged up in one area. It's important for the Imperial player to keep spreading out and trying to hunt down that hidden base. So revealing the rebel base, there's two ways the Imperial player can reveal the rebel base and that's by moving into the system where the hidden rebel base is and landing units on the planet or there's uh, certain missions in their mission deck that might allow them to gain loyalty in systems and so if the Imperial player ever gains loyalty in the system where the hidden base is, the rebels have to reveal it. So I'm just going to show you uh, how the rebels would reveal it from units landing on the planet. So Grand Moff Tarkin is in Salakam. Uh, the Imperials are in Salakami, and they're going to use Grand Moff Tarkin to activate Mon Calamari. They're going to move their units in. There will be a combat, but before the combat happens, now that the Imperial player has landed units on the planet, there will be a ground battle. The rebel player now has to reveal whether or not the hidden base is there. And it just so happens that it is. So this is where the rebels selected at the start of the game. So they reveal the location card. They put it on the rebel base space. Then any units that are in the rebel base space will then move 
him on calamari so it's going to bolster their defenses a little bit um for as long as this remains the rebel base you can still use these resource icons instead of these ones but um and then a combat will happen now if the Re if the imperial player manages to destroy all the rebel units in this combat he will win the game doesn't look very likely because the rebels have a decent amount of uh, defenses there but so at this stage now we will have a combat so let's have a look at combat so anytime units move into a system where there are enemy units there will be a combat and if there is both space and ground then you will obviously a full round of combat involves resolving both a space and a ground combat so the first thing that happens is that the rebel player will have a chance to add one of its leaders and like when activating systems you have to add a leader that has a tactics value to this so as you can see princess leia has one space one ground and what these tactics values mean not not just for moving around but so after the rebel player has decided whether they're adding a leader or not you now draw tactics cards from the deck so you can there's a, a space deck and a ground deck so grand moff tarka will draw two space tactics cards so he's drawn two space tactics cards and he will draw one ground tactics card so there you go one ground and princess leia will get one of each so princess leia gets one of each and now we carry out a combat round so we do the space battle first so the units involved so we will count up uh, the dice uh, that each unit provides so if we look over here so the imperial player has a star destroyer and two tie fighters so he will be rolling for the star destroyer one black dice two red and one black dice each for the tie fighters and there we go so let's roll these dice Okay, and let's just so that's a decent that's a decent roll. So the different so each ship has different damage. So for example, the rebel ships in this battle there is a Corellian Corvette and two Y wings and an X Wing. So the Corellian Corvette takes red damage and the two Y wings and the X wing take black damage which is why we have red and black dice so on a black dice if you roll this this can only damage do damage to ships that take black damage this is a direct hit so you can assign this damage to either uh, ships that take red or black damage similarly with the red dice that can only do uh, that's a hit a hit can only do damage to ships with red damage but a direct hit can do damage to either black or red uh, ships to take black or red damage so the lightsabers so once you've rolled the dice uh, you can start using the lightsabers because the next part of combat is combat actions so you can use these lightsaber dice to either uh, you can play a tactic card so if we look at this tactic card so this is one of the imperial tactics cards on slot so you can sacrifice uh, this dice to do this ability deal one damage to up to two ships so yes we're gonna do that so I'll put that dice there we've got another we've got one more 
we roll one more dice that has lightsabers. So we can draw another tactics card with that. Because we don't have any other uh, combat cards that use that use this uh, ability. So we can draw another space card from the deck. There we go. But we also want to use this card. So this one just simply says do deal one damage. So we're going to put that down there. Now we're going to assign the damage. So for example, so we've got three direct hits here. So we can assign that damage to any ship we like. So we come back over and get some damage tokens. So one damage to do different ships. So we're gonna do, we'll, we'll resolve this uh, tactics card first. One damage to two different ships. So I'm gonna do one damage to the Corellian Corvette. One damage to the X-Wing. Then the other tactics card we played was just critical hit, just deal one damage. So I'm going to deal the other damage to this. So that's two damage to the Corellian Corvette. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the dice. I'm going to do the three direct hits so you can do damage to any sh either colored uh, ships. So I'm going to do one damage to that one, one damage to the other Y wing, and we still got one damage to do, so I'm going to do one more damage to the Corellian, so that's three damage. The Corellian Corvette only takes two damage, so what that does, it'll basically pre hopefully prevent the Rebel player from stopping it from being destroyed, because after you assign damage, then the rebel player gets a chance to block damage by playing tactics cards and the rebel player just so happens to have defensive formation block one damage but even if it blocks one damage off the Corellian corvette it's taken three damage so it's not going to be enough to save it so we'll block one damage from the y-wing which means that the y-wing will survive till the next round now, the Rebel player will still get to roll dice for all these ships, but it just means at the end of the round, basically, all of them are getting destroyed, apart from the Y-Wing. And so, he would roll, the Corellian Corvette gets one red and one black, and, and this is from the player board. And then the two Y-Wings get two red, and then the X-Wing, it gets a black. So we would then, same thing, so they would roll dice. Let's get rid of these tactics cards that have been used, discarded. So that was a really good roll for the, that was a really good roll for the Rebels. So, looks like they're gonna be able to do enough to even the fight out. So same again, the, Rebel player now has a chance to do combat actions, whether it's playing a tactics card, but she used up her tactics card blocking that damage. There's no lightsaber dice, so she can't pick up another, Princess Leia can't pick up another tactics card, so straight to assign damage. So we've got two red damage, the Super Star Destroyer takes four red damage, so two red damage, two direct hits, which can be assigned to any ship, and another direct hit be assigned to any ship so we're going to assign four damage to the star destroyer four damage to the star destroyer and one to one of the x-wings now now the imperial player has a chance to block damage so let's see unfortunately their other space card is just to re-roll dice so we can't block damage so now we destroy units. So the Star Destroyer took four damage, so that's gone. 
like it's damaged markers. One of the TIE fighters has been destroyed. The Corellian Corvette has been destroyed. X wing and a Y wing. So it's a Y wing versus a TIE fighter. Then you would move on to ground combat, and ground pa combat works the exact same way. You so the attacking player, which is the Empire, would gather their dice, roll first. Then they have the option to do combat actions, which is play tactics cards or use the lightsaber to activate abilities on the tactics cards, or you can pick up more tactics cards by using the lightsabers. Once you've done that, you will assign damage, so you would take use the dice to assign damage to the enemy ships. Once you've assigned the damage, the rebel player will then get a chance to block damage with any tactics cards they may have. Then the, then the, Imperial, the rebel player will then do the same thing. Roll dice, combat actions using tactics cards, spending their lightsaber dice. The, Imperial, the rebel player then will assign damage and then You'll destroy units. At that point, the players have a chance to retreat. So at the end of a round of combat, when you've resolved both uh, space and ground combat, players then have the chance to retreat. And the rules of retreating are you have to have a leader to retreat with. So... If, for example, the rebels had not added a leader to this combat, the rebels cannot retreat in this in this round of uh, after this round of combat. Obviously, you have to be able to retreat all units. So, ground units. If you're retreating ground units, obviously you have to have a ship that can carry them, and it has to be. So, you have to retreat to either a unit. Uh, sorry, a system that is loyal to you. Or it can be the wording in the rule book is quite strange, but I have clarified it, and it can be so for example, the imperial player can can retreat back to here if it likes, and the imperial uh, the rebel player could retreat to Felucia because. Even though it's not loyal to them, it is still neutral. So they, so they don't have any other option. So if they don't have any other options, they can never retreat into a place where the Imperial player has just came from. And obviously they can't retreat anyway because it's, uh, it's loyal to the Empire. But they can retreat to Felucia because they don't have a loyal system adjacent. And as I said, you have to have a leader and you have to have the units that can carry the uh, carry the other units. In this scenario, the rebels wouldn't retreat because they'd lose the game. But if this was just a normal combat and they wanted to retreat, they have a transport that can carry units. So they could retreat there. So following on from revealing the rebel base when the Empire finds it, if... so. The rebels can always choose to move. So if they think the Empire is getting too close, they can play this rapid mobilization mission. And the rapid mobilization, the leader assigned to it, needs to have a logistics skill. And it, like all logistics missions, it is a resolve mission, so the Empire cannot oppose it. And so it allows you to... If the rebel base is not revealed, move up to five units from one, from one system to the rebel base space, ignoring the adjacency. So that gives you the option of reinforcing the rebel base space. So you can move uh, units from another system to there, ignoring the adjacency. So if you feel like you might have enough to hold out and you're close to winning the game, you could do that. Or if you wanted to move, uh, you can establish a new base. And if you assign two leaders to this mission, then you can draw eight probe cards instead of four. So what you would do, you get the probe deck. 
like so and then you would so you assign so for example we could assign if we had recruited Lando Calrissian because he's got logistics and to give ourselves more option we're going to assign General Riken too so we've got two leaders assigned to this mission so we can now deal eight cards from the top of the probe deck then we will look at these cards and we would now you don't have to choose another base but because if it's late in the game you might pick up all these cards and look at the board and think wow the the, the imperial player has already um discovered and moved into a lot of these systems and taken over these systems so you obviously can't set up your new hidden base if the rebel player is already there so so you can look through these and if you then decide that yeah you do want to uh, move your hidden base then you will select the card but then remember we selected uh, mon calamari so you would reveal mon calamari move all your units from the hidden base to the planet mon calamari then you give this card to the imperial player and he keeps it basically so you can't so it stops you from being sneaky and then you will select so we'll select naboo for example then you would put naboo underneath the location the rebel base space and you move uh, that would be your rebel base and unless you have units on the board on naboo your rebel base space will not have any units on it now so you need to get recruiting and putting units in there so at the start of the refresh phase the rebel player will have the opportunity to complete one of his objectives this is his starting objective which says at the start of the refresh phase play if at least three imperial systems contain either a sabotage marker or a rebel unit so let's talk about sabotage markers so the rebel player has a mission sabotage which when you complete the mission it allows you to place sabotage marker in the system so for example if if the rebels attempted this mission in Megiddo and the mission was successful they would place their sabotage marker and it covers the resource icons which now means that this planet which is loyal to the empire cannot build these units nor can it deploy units to this planet so that's uh, sabotage markers so cannot build them units while well, that's covered nor can you deploy units to this planet So back to the back to your objective cards. If the rebel player meets the meets the requirement of this objective, he will get the reputation that's in the top left corner, and then you will obviously you will then move your reputation marker one space, and you can only complete one of these. At the start of every refresh phase you can only do one objective card now there is combat objective cards so let's have a look so combat so you can play one of these per round in the combat so if you if you meet the requirements of it so if you if you destroy a if play after a Star Destroyer or Super Star Destroyer has been destroyed in a combat that you initiated. So if you complete this, the requirement here, during a combat, you can play this uh, during the combat to gain one reputation. And as I said, we can only play one combat objective per game round. And also remember, one uh, objective at the start of each refresh phase. So then... After the uh, rebel player has a chance to complete objectives, you will then retrieve all your leaders. Retrieve your leaders, put them back in your player in your leader pool. Uh, 
like so, all your leaders from the board, Princess Leia, who's just been in that battle. So you will draw a mission card, so you ensure that after a game round, missions you have used with the starting missions, with the arrow on the bottom, they will go straight back into your hand. Any other missions that you used, will, will, you will make a discard pile beside your mission deck. Then you will draw two mission cards, so this is your hand of mission cards, draw two more. Remembering that there is a hand size of 10 for your mission uh, cards. So if you ever have any more than 10 in the refresh phase, then you will have to discard down to 10. Similarly for the Imperial player, make sure to discard any missions you use, keep in the starting ones, and then draw two more missions. So the Imperial player then gets to draw probe cards. So he'll draw the top two from the probe deck. And this is the main way that the Imperial player starts to narrow down his search for the Rebel base. Because obviously now he knows the Rebel base isn't in Tatooine or in Magito. And there is some cool apps online uh, that you can get onto your phone which allow you to keep track of which planets um, you've either conquered or you have taken the probe cards for. But yeah, so... That's the next part of the refresh phase is for the Imperial player to draw two of these probe cards. The Rebel player then draws an objective card, puts it in his hand of objective cards. There's no hand limit for them. The next thing we do is we advance the turn marker. So two important there's two important icons when you're moving the turn marker. So this means that at this stage now, you will recruit new leaders, and also you can build units. So this, this one here means you can build units. On turn three, you can only, when you advance the marker to three, you can only recruit new leaders, no building. But four, recruit and build. Five, recruit only, and then, you know, after turn five, you can't recruit any more leaders, but you can still build on each even round. And just a quick reminder about how the Rebels win the game. So as we've seen in the, ref at the start of the refresh phase, the Rebels completed a, an objective and started moving the counter reputation marker down. And so once again, if the turn marker and if the reputation marker ever gets on top. So if the rebels keep completing objectives, the Empire can't find a hidden base. Once the rebel player uh, moves the reputation marker on top of the turn marker, it's an instant victory for the rebels. So to recruit new leaders, so you have your action deck, so you'll take the top two cards from the action deck. So here we have an old friend and one in a million. So you will now recruit new leaders based on one of these cards. So an old friend is a really good card because it it's a mission where Han Solo can actually recruit another leader during the actual game phase. So you don't have to wait until the recruit phase in the refresh uh, yeah you don't have to wait on the recruitment in the refresh phase before you uh, recruit a leader so you can actually recruit an extra leader you can never have any more than eight leaders anyway but this is a quick way of getting you uh, an extra leader and so with one in a million you can recruit either Luke Skywalker or Wedge Antilles And this will give you a special ability that you can use during combat. So we're going to, we're going to, I think the best bet here will be to recruit Han Solo. So you simply put the card you're not using at the bottom of the deck. So keep this now with the, with the action cards that you drew at the start of the game. 
then you simply recruit Han Solo into your leader pool, like so. And it's the exact same for the Empire player. Draw the top two cards of their action deck and pick one and recruit the leader from it. So the next part of the refresh phase in this round is to build. And to build the units, you will look at any system where you have loyalty or subjugation. And then you will build the units based on the resource icons. And then you will, and this number here is where you will place them on the build queue. So Corellia is loyal to the Empire, so it allows them to build one TIE Fighter and one Star Destroyer. And it will go on number three on the build queue. So we've got a Star Destroyer and a TIE Fighter. And it goes, I've placed them on slot three of the build queue. Now, Sullust. So Sullust is subjugated, so that means we ignore the rightmost um, icon. So we only build the leftmost, which is a Stormtrooper. So we build one Stormtrooper, and that will go on space two of the build queue. And I usually just, uh, I use damage markers. I just put a damage token in each system, just to remind me that I've already built there. So you'll carry on doing that. Similarly with the Rebel player. So if we look here, up in Mon Calamari, the Rebel player has loyalty and it can build an X-Wing or a Y-Wing and a Mon Calamari Cruiser and it will go on space three of their build queue. So let's take an X-Wing and a Mon Calamari Cruiser and we will put them on space three of the Rebels build queue. And then you carry on, we'll carry on doing that you'll keep so Salakami the Imperial player will build a ATST and that goes on space one of the build queue. Put my damage token there to remind me. Then you got Mandalore so it'll be one Stormtrooper and one TIE Fighter. And it goes on space one of the build queue. So, so on, so forth. You keep building, going to your different planets where you have loyalty. Build the units and put them on the build queue. Then the final part of the refresh phase is to deploy. So anything that's on space one of the build queue, you will take it off because you will be deploying it this round and everything else moves down one space. We've only got, well, we've only got three units to deploy, but the most important thing to remember about deploying units is you can never deploy more than two units to a system. So you can't put these, all these three units in one system. The maximum is two per system. So, and they can go, the, the Imperial ones can go anywhere where they have loyalty or subjugation. Similarly with the rebel units that you will, you can take these from and you can put them in one of your planets. So we're going to put them in Naboo. And that is how you build and deploy your units. So that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this uh, playthrough and uh, learn to play video of Star Wars Rebellion. This is my first ever uh, how to play video. So if you have any comments or if there's anything you picked up that I might have done wrong, please feel free to leave them uh, in the comment section. Um, and until next time, hopefully there will be a next time, 
thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.